So I'm literally about to uh, to leave for the airport and I got a message on Reddit from somebody who said, I noticed you're making a video on Actually Happened and wanted to know if you'd like me to forward you an email I got from The Soul Publishing a few days ago. What? And so he sent me the email and um, it's better if I just show you. Happy 2019, everybody. I hope your new year is going well. I am accidentally spending my New Year's Eve on a plane because I'm going to Puerto Rico to see one of my good friends get married and I don't know how time zones work. But in brighter news, I have another upsetting YouTube channel to talk about before I go. Today I'll be talking about the YouTube channel Actually Happened and how it's totally fake. Now, despite the fact that the channel is less than a year old, it's almost at a million subscribers and I've had it on my radar for a while because it is another channel started by the Five Minute Crafts people or the Bright Side people, the Soul Publishing. If you've been around for a while, you've heard me talk at length about Five Minute Crafts and, and Brightside, and particularly how they tend to abuse the YouTube algorithm, favoring quantity over quality, and how Brightside seems to just outright plagiarize other creators. They didn't even change the speech bubble. They just redrew the art. And they're at it again with Actually Happened. Another issue I have with these channels is how the YouTube platform seems to be like co-signing them. Today and yesterday, Actually Happened's videos have been trending, and today it's, it's number three. Um, and I have a problem with that. At worst, their content is totally fake, and at best, it's super dishonest. Actually Happens describes itself as a digital platform that gives people the chance to have their personal stories turned into animations and shared around the world. The only criteria is that it must be true. Now, if this sounds familiar, it's because it's almost exactly how another YouTube channel, Storybooth, describes itself. Storybooth is a, a website and YouTube channel where kids actually submit stories and then they narrate those stories. I just watched this story from this young girl named Akila. Uh, and it was really cute and you can tell here that she's a real person and uh, she actually narrates her own story They link back to her channel. Everybody has a good time The reason I'm mentioning all of this is because actually happened pretends to do all of this except for it's all totally fake There is no platform to speak of they have no website The only way that you could possibly submit stories is by emailing this email that they put in their videos Which is just welcome at brightside.me the same email that they use across all of their channels all of actually happened stories are are, are vague, generic, provably false, <laughs> uh, or stolen from the internet. So before I go on, let's just watch one. This first one is called, I broke up with my girlfriend because of potatoes. Hi, I'm Andy. Hi Andy, do you exist? <laughs> no. I've always had a particular sense of humor. I also used to have a girlfriend who I guess wasn't compatible with my sense of humor. Is he, is he supposed to be British or Australian? <laughs> so my girlfriend invited me to dinner with her and her parents. Blimey, I never met them, and I got pretty nervous. Does anyone actually say blimey? I'm gonna guess no. <laughs> you know that milestone that any man prefers to see far ahead. You know that milestone that any man prefers to see far ahead. What are you talking about? But alas, I knew it must be done. I met them nicely, I should tell you, and it started off in a good way. I met them nicely, I should tell you. Blimey, I sure am a normal person with normal speaking patterns. <laughs> then the idea slapped my mind that I should do some comedy to make a good impression and amuse them a little. I should do some comedy. <laughs> when I saw they were gonna serve baked potatoes. Uh, real quick. Dinner is four tiny potato wedges. <laughs> I decided to pretend I didn't know what potatoes were. That's hilarious. Pretend that you don't know what potatoes are. That's a great way to make a first impression. That would be hilarious, I thought. <laughs> what is this? They stared at me and the mother said, it's a baked potato. A potato? Never heard of that potato. Looks pretty good. Unbelievably, they didn't see I was clowning. Unbelievably, they didn't see that I was clowning. This was the moment I started to suspect they have literally no sense of humor. Uh, hmm. I knew it would be a humiliating epic fail if I admitted to making a joke. So I decided to act naturally till the very end. Act naturally till the very end. Never reveal that it's a joke. Okay. If you, if you tell a joke and, and you commit to it and no one ever knows that you were telling a joke, that's just lying. At one point, her annoyed father says something like, enough is enough, you're kidding us. Enough is enough, you're kidding us. <laughs> this guy's worse than the Buzzfeed guy who's never eaten vegetables. Next vegetable, please. This is celery. I don't like that. At least that guy admits to knowing what vegetables are. Finally, the father said I should get out. 
and I said it was irrational to treat me like this just because I never heard of a potato before. After that, I left with dignity. Honestly, I gotta give this guy props for committing even when it's clearly destroying all of his personal relationships. What I thought was that people with no sense of humor bore me a lot and that I needed to break up with my girlfriend. Jeez, man. Me and my parents were roaring with laughter. I never heard from her since. I never heard from her since? Wh what? This isn't a joke. You're a bad person. It could be a sad story if I wasn't deeply convinced you can have many girlfriends. Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> so it's easier to change girlfriend than to try and pretend to be a person you're not. You, that's your takeaway from this? It's easier to just find different people than to learn to grow as a person. Please subscribe and share this video to let everyone know how useful a prank may be. How useful a, uh, how useful a prank can be? Pranks don't come off as useful. Okay, okay. So, um, God, this is exhausting. Uh, now you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, what a, what a very true story uh, from this anonymous boy. What are the odds that this oddly specific story was also posted to the Today I F***ed Up subreddit three years ago? This channel is positioning itself like the stories come from fellow kids, when in reality, they are uh, fictionalized and or plagiarized stories made up by a corporation. Okay, so this next one is called, I became a criminal, but was suddenly caught. Hello, my name is Fred. Mine is a story about crime and punishment. <laughs> that escalated quickly. I am actually a good boy, but once I became a criminal and I am not proud of it. So you're not a good boy. <laughs> At school, I made friends with a group of very cool guys. There were four of us. We all made friends since early childhood. At some point, as we were growing, life didn't seem thrilling enough anymore. <laughs> that is really sad. <laughs> we realized that life wasn't thrilling anymore. <laughs> we were trying to invent ourselves some dangerous activities, from parkour to extreme acrobatics. Are we gonna overlook the fact that that guy just fucking flew? <laughs> After some thought, we came out with a brilliant idea. Shoplifting. This thing is really dangerous if you get caught. Is it though? And as we read in the internet, can even make an anti-global statement, which is kind of cool. Your guess is as good as mine. We started with small things, like stealing a chocolate bar or a Coke bottle. We did it in a group, trying various schemes. You need schemes to steal candy bars? We didn't do it for money. We had enough pocket money from our parents. Weird flex, but okay. In a couple months, we became Spider-Man professionals. Oh. We were quite successful, but the rule of life is that sooner or later, you would be caught anyway. Till now, I'm not sure what I did wrong. Point is that I was noticed. I have a few guesses. I wasn't sure what I did wrong. The security took me back into his office and asked me why I stole food. Why do they have an FBI interrogation room in the back of a supermarket? Please share and like my story if you like it. And thank God it's anonymous. Thank God it's anonymous. That way, it doesn't have to be real. So a lot of these stories are vague and generic and hide under the fact that they're anonymous. Anytime someone tells you something happened but uh, conveniently doesn't have any proof, it didn't happen. Hi everyone, I'm Amanda. Some time ago, I studied at a usual school. Some time ago, I studied at a usual school. That's not suspicious at all. It's like the most vague thing possible. So this video is called, uh, I rebelled at school bans, but it went too far. It's talking about like things that you're not allowed to have at school. Our school principal was trying to prevent a senior prank since the class before us had got a little out of hand, actually pretty out of hand. They organized an enormous swimming pool inside the library. Okay, so if any time in the last 15 years, someone had organized a swimming pool inside of a library, that would have been reported on, you know what I mean? But I cannot find any uh, record of this happening. Also, if you filled the library up with water, that would destroy so much property. So they basically told us not to have a traditional prank and that they would get anyone who would be involved in a lot of trouble. Hey, but one has a senior year once in a lifetime. Uh, I mean, if you go to college, you have, you have tw two of them. <laughs> Suddenly, one of us got an idea. Um, what if we do an anti-prank? Um, while I was watching this video, in the sidebar, like the info cards, a poll came up from Actually Happened that said, do you support the idea of students? 
Like in general, what are they asking? So for several days, every senior was going to bring a potentially threatening item for a prank and do nothing with it. First day, it would be a banana. And 500 people brought bananas to school and then they all got confiscated. And then the next day they all brought water bottles and they all got confiscated. And then... Damn, this was the last straw. So the students started sharing the news to social media. Tons of tweets and shares were going out to local news stations and then spreading around the country. Around the country. What country? I won't say. Uh, but I'm from a usual place. Our situation was mentioned in lots of daily shows and news broadcasts. At this point, it becomes provably false, right? Like, this doesn't exist. 500 students didn't have a viral social media campaign about their water because we would be able to find it out. There's just no, there's no trace of this at all on the internet. I looked for any anything that was similar to this on the internet and I found one story about a school confiscating water bottles. More likely is that uh, I found this exact story once again on Reddit where it is probably also made up because so many of these stories on Reddit are made up, but like the bananas and water bottles thing is like too specific. Most of the stories pepper in these really dramatic elements like divorce and mental breakdowns and depression and disease. And one of the most upsetting things they do is, is using people in very vulnerable situations as clickbait, which is just like emotionally manipulative, especially with videos like this one. This video is called, My Mom Woke Up From A Coma And It's Terrifying. I need to share my story because I need to know that I am not alone. This is so intense. A year ago, I was a happy girl and my biggest problem was back talking at school. <laughs> I wish I could turn back and tell myself that my life was wonderful. I am only 13 now. My name is Alice and I am so tired. So this video is very sad and I don't want it to seem like I'm being insensitive by talking about it, but I think it illustrates how emotionally charged some of the videos on this channel are. And because we have enough evidence, or at least I have enough evidence to say that a lot of the videos are, are fake or plagiarized or at least inspired by, by other people's stories, we know this, this specific story is probably fake. We know that there's not a real girl named Alice or even a real person who submitted this story because I find it hard to believe that a 13 year old found this channel in the last six months and workshopped this story for no personal gain and then their channel gets to monetize the story. Like it just seems a little far fetched to me. When the news came, I didn't know how to accept it. She finally woke up. That was the good news. But the bad one was that doctors said she suffered grave brain damage. That means she didn't talk or react or recognize anyone. They called it a vegetative state, but actually it is a vegetable state. And I say that as someone who has gone through a very similar story as what's described in the video. That's partly why it's so upsetting to me because when I was 12, I had basically the same thing happened to me that happened in the video, except for it was uh, not a car crash, it was due to complications from a stroke. And so I, I could relate to a lot of what's being said in the video and, and can say, yeah, no, that, that aligns with my experience. And the problem is that because this isn't real, there are a bunch of people in the comments like expending their emotional energy and being emotionally manipulated by this fake story where they're like sending their condolences and stuff. Um, my heart goes out to the little girl and the, her father. And all it serves is to add to the comment metrics for this channel. Like, it just seems wrong to me. Maybe you know how to overcome this tiredness. Please let me know in the comments. Now, I could be wrong here. And I think that's what's so hard. Hi. I, I've got my, my Shane Dawson lamp. Okay, so I'm literally about to uh, to leave for the airport. And I got a message on Reddit from somebody who said, I noticed you're making a video on actually happened and wanted to know if you'd like me to forward you an email I got from The Soul Publishing a few days ago. What? <laughs> uh, I posted about this in the subreddit and like nobody commented on it. So I didn't think anybody saw it, but then I got this message. And so I, there are like fireworks happening. Happy New Year. And so he sent me the email and um, it's better if I just show you. I'm gonna blur out all of the uh, personal information in this cause I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble. But 
the email is from hello at admi.ru. And I was like, what is admi.ru? So I went into an incognito browser and it's just the Brightside website, but in Russian. It's exactly the same website. Seems pretty legit so far. It says, <clears throat> thank you for the interesting to the vacancy in our company. Seems like they may be actually based in Russia and they start talking about the job because the way he got this email was he just uh, inquired about a job. So I don't feel like I'm exposing any company secrets here. This is literally the first email he got after inquiring. But here's what's really interesting. One of our current projects is an already well-established YouTube channel that's steadily moving towards 1 million subscribers. In order to reach that target faster, we need your help. Can you imagine uh, which YouTube channel is steadily moving towards a million subscribers? Stay tuned. This is for the scriptwriter job. They have these like job postings on their on their website, and one of them is scriptwriter. I I talked about this in the uh, in the bright side video. I think a scriptwriter is the individual who is fully responsible for the quality of stories told by our characters. Our channel offers real life stories told by American teenagers aged up to 16. Because this project has been up and running already for several months and we therefore already know what the audience wants, we have several requirements for our scripts. Believability. Stories ought to sound like they're told by a real teenager and be as close to real life as possible without creating a sense that they're fake. Topicality. The characters in our videos tell a wide range of stories, sad ones, happy ones, absurd ones, and even shameful ones. Our task is to find subjects that will be understandable, relatable, and interesting to as large a number of teenagers as possible. You can use as references the stories of real people that they've shared on various social media platforms. At the same time, your script should be a real story with a beginning, the development events, and an outcome to ensure the viewer doesn't become bored. The story needs to be written in lively colloquial English, excellent quality of English. The American viewer, oh my God. The American viewer should feel that your central characters are native English speakers. We strongly recommend writing the text in English and then translating it into Russian. And then, and here's where uh, you should remove any and all doubt about what we're talking about here. They give a couple of Google Drive links to finished videos and- uh, All right, let's see what we got here. It's actually happened. My parents hated my boyfriend at MP4. Um, if you go over to the details here, you can see that the owner of this file is somebody at thesoulpublishing.net. Just searching around and translating some things into Cyrillic, I was able to find Russian LinkedIn pages for these people that confirmed that they worked at this company. I really need to leave for my flight, so I'm gonna try and uh, wrap this up. I feel like this is for sure real. And, and the most concerning parts are that they don't want people to think it's fake, so it needs to seem believable. As close to real life as possible. And um, the fact that it's advanced English speakers who primarily speak Russian. The person who sent this to me said that they couldn't make it any further in the interview because they needed to be fluent in Russian to submit one of these scripts. But yeah, this seems pretty clear to me that they're they're trying to fake appealing to, to teenagers <laughs> with, with stories. Okay, I gotta go catch my flight. Ugh, bye. Now, I could be wrong here, and I think that's what makes it so hard to criticize this channel, but I'm doing it anyway because I think we should all be a little bit more critical of what we're watching on YouTube. And I think that YouTube should be a little bit more critical of what it is is willing to promote on the trending page because we know that it's not an automated system that decides what gets on trending. I think if we're gonna write stories about who PewDiePie is promoting and talk about how he should be more rigorous with who he decides to promote, YouTube, the platform should do the same because its influence is dramatically larger. It would it would be nice if you could subscribe to the channel and share her story so that maybe someone who has had a similar experience could share it with her. No, to me that's just emotionally manipulating people for views and comments. Like this video if you want your mom to live forever. <sighs> It's also important to note that people are only clicking on these things because they think they're real, which reminds me of like Lonely Girl 15, who uh, for the younger ones out there was a, a vlogger who lived this really interesting life until we all found out that it was just filmed in a studio lot and starred an actress. And then it died because it wasn't interesting when it was fake because we have different expectations of real life and drama and intentionally blurring those lines or or you know lying that drama is real life you know has consequences didn't mean to end on a bummer uh <laughs> i just wanted to call this out because it's really upsetting to keep seeing this stuff show up and trending um and no one talking about it so there we go 
thanks to this Whedon Hout for sending me a message on Instagram. I have no idea if I'm saying that right, really. If you want me to butcher your name, send me a message on Instagram or Twitter, at Jarvis, about to go to Puerto Rico. So I will try to get something out next week. But if I don't, I'm sorry. All right, bye.